saw a tweet today that I thought that really got me angry. And I already know, uh, I, I already know that our country is corrupt. I already know that this country is an oligarchy built on greed, but they're not even hiding it anymore. The corporations, they don't give a, they don't give a damn. They're not hiding it. Uh, there's a real Gordon Gecko on steroids thing going on in America now. It was happening before Trump, it's happening with Trump. So McDonald's, which I'm not gonna lie to you, when I was on the road for TYT and when I get back on the road, I mean, uh, there, I like McDonald's chicken nuggets. It's terrible for you. It's probably why I'm ill, but I like me some McDonald's chicken nuggets with barbecue sauce. I liked it since I was six years old when Mama Charitin, when I got a A minus or a B plus on my report card, would take me to the McDonald's drive through as a, as a um, reward. And she would get me, I started with 10 piece chicken nuggets, but then I went up to 20 piece chicken nuggets. So I ain't proud of it. It's probably why I have stomach problems, but I've had a lot of McDonald's chicken nuggets in my life. But if I would have known then that those McDonald's chicken nuggets were not, were enriching, not its workers, not the people who actually make the chicken nuggets and sweep the floors and serve the customers, but it's greedy, 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 greedy CEO, I might have not had those chicken nuggets. Nuggets are fake food. I agree. Now, take a look at this. McDonald's CEO, Easterbrook, sees pay package nearly double to $15.4 million. McDonald's CEO, Steve Easterbrook's total compensation nearly doubled to $15.4 million last year, his second full year in the top job according to the Securities and Exchange Commission filing Thursday. Easterberg received a base salary of about 1.3 million last year, up from just over 1 million in 2015. The value of his stock awards jumped to 5.1 million, up from 2.9 million the year before. And the value of his stock options awards rose to 3.9 million from 2.1 million the year before. His performance-based bonus shot up to $4.6 million from $1.5 million in 2015. And the value of his perks rose to $523,665 excuse me, $523,665 from $341,301 a year earlier. The executive received perks including a car allowance, security, life insurance and financial planning, matching charitable contributions and use of the company aircraft, including for personal trips. Easterbrook has been widely credited with setting the world's largest burger chain, if you want to call those burgers, on a path to growth after several challenging years. Through the introduction of promotions like all day breakfast, what a genius he is. He came up with all day breakfast and putting a renewed emphasis on food quality and taste. But the U.S. market, McDonald's largest, is in decline as the company has failed to lure more customers into the restaurants. Executives said last month that McDonald's has lost an estimated 500 million customer transactions in the U.S. market since 2012, when it first started phasing out the dollar menu. Most of those losses have not have been so to so-called better burger rivals like Five Guys and Shake Shack, but to closer rivals like Wendy's. It is acknowledged that its latest attempt at a value meal, McPick 2, failed in part because some combinations were too expensive. Um, I don't know what, how it's possible. If McDonald's isn't doing as well as it used to, how is the CEO's salary going up double to $15.4 million. How, how, is, how is that happening in this country? I remember interviewing a, a woman in Alabama last year. It was a Burger King worker. And I was interviewing her in front, not of a Burger King, but in front of, uh, I forget what the restaurant was, another burger joint. And she was a young woman, African-American, making $7 and I believe seven forty dollars an hour. She was visibly thin uh, to the point of unhealthy, unhealthily skin. 
She told me if she's lucky, she eats one and a half meals a day. She told me she has to choose between food for the week or medication. She can't go get uh, she can't go get better education because she has to work three jobs. And that is at Burger King, which makes pretty much the same disgusting profit for its CEOs as McDonald's does. Now, because we have no laws in America that actually are there for people, the laws are for corporate CEOs. The laws are for uh, corporate executives, uh, the laws are for lobbyists, the laws are for bankers, the law are for uh, Big Pharma, the laws are for Big Oil, the laws are for Silicon Valley, and McDonald's CEOs, because McDonald's CEO, they give a lot of money to the politicians. And who cares if they're workers all over the U.S., and frankly the world, but we're just talking about the U.S. now, who cares if they're starving? Who cares if they can't feed their family? Who cares? I get my yacht, I get my stock options, it's, it's vile. It's truly, truly vile. And press the share button so we can get this out to more people. It's, it's vile when you have, um, you know, I'm not, believe it or not, I'm not against like people doing well. I'd like to do well. You know, I'd like to, enough money to have a nice house and, you know, feed my kids if, if I ever have any and, and go on a vacation from time to time. But at a certain point, as a human, you either care that other people could live or you don't care that other people can live. And, you know, I've spoken with older people that like came up in the 1950s and 60s. And the main difference between the 1950s and 1960s, besides the fact that we had rules that govern the so you couldn't have endless amount of money in politics, you couldn't have politicians being crazily bought off. You had strong labor unions in the 1950s and 60s. You had uh, CEOs made about, I don't know, 10 to 15 times more their worker. Now they make three, 300 to 350 times their basic, their common worker. In what society is that okay? In what society is that an equal democracy? That is an oligarchy. This isn't a democracy. This is not a society where we all have equal, equal opportunity. And, if, and majority of the time, it was African-Americans and uh, Latinos and Native Americans that didn't have the equal opportunity. But now it's a whole lot of white folk, too. You see a lot of white people working at McDonald's, too, because it's not just white, black, brown, Native anymore. It's poor. And there's no way to get out of that poverty because our politicians have created the laws that keep people in poverty and keep people struggling. And then you know what else happens? When McDonald's CEO, his salary goes up double and his worker remains, I'm about to tell you the average salary, but his worker remains at a starvation wage. You know what happens? Those workers then have to go on Medicare, uh, excuse me, Medicaid and food stamps. And then you have Republicans and some Democrats say, oh, these takers, these takers, go get a job. Yeah, they all have jobs. They, can't, they don't have enough money to eat with those jobs. You have people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s making less than I did at 13 or 14 years old with kids, with debt. And McDonald's CEO, $15.4 million. This is obscene. This is obscene. There's very little coverage of these things. There's very little coverage of this type of, it's not just injustice, it's criminal. It's criminal. This CEO and companies like this, Walmart, McDonald's, Burger King, Target, they are knowingly, knowingly starving their workers so that they could go buy yachts and have insane mansions. You know what? Good for the McDonald's CEO. He was so brilliant. He came up with all day breakfast. I mean, that's a better invention than, you know, the stove. He's so smart. He deserves $15.4 million a year while his worker, here we go. Ready for this? This is from Bernie Sanders, policy advisor. His name is Warren Gunnels. The average cashier at McDonald's makes just $8.27 an hour. $8.27 an hour. If that worker got the same 94% pay raise as McDonald's CEO received last year, she would be making over $16 an hour. 
Mickey D's isn't a poor company. Last year, it made over five billion in profits. I'm just going to leave that tweet up for a minute so you could let that sink in. This guy, the CEO, up to $15.4 million, not to mention all his perks, stock options, great health care. His, his average worker is making $8.27 an hour. And by the way, that's just the average. So there are people making less. There are people making a little more, but not much more. So the CEO just got a 94% raise for the, I mean, I'm sorry to poo poo it, but uh, you know, like my three-year-old nephew, beautiful, beautiful, cute kid, he could have came up with all day breakfast. Does he deserve 15.4 million? This is not revolution, a revolutionary idea. $16 an hour they'd be paid if they got the same raise. And you know what? $16 an hour isn't even enough, but it's a lot better than $8.27. Bernie's policy advisor had another strong tweet. Don't tell me that McDonald's can't afford to pay its workers a living wage. Last year, it gave shareholders $7.7 billion, $7.7 billion in dividends and buybacks. If it had given this money to his workers instead, they would have each gotten a $10,000 bonus. Can you imagine if you're working at McDonald's for $8.27 and you get a $10,000 bonus? That's life-changing for some people. 